Thank you very much. Your Royal Highness, Chief Rabbi, Your Excellency, Rabbonim, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all at World Jewish Relief, let me say quite simply, thank you. Thank you for all the support that you have given us and thank you for all your support going forwards in all that we aspire to achieve together. I'm really genuinely thrilled to stand here for the first time as Chair of World Jewish Relief, excited by the challenges ahead and emboldened by the 84 years of experience that World Jewish Relief brings in supporting Jewish lives and communities. And it's truly a privilege to be speaking here in the presence of so many esteemed guests and friends, particularly you, Your Royal Highness, whose very professional patronage we are so very grateful for, um, and as well as the Chief Rabbi and His Excellency, the Israeli Ambassador. Thank you all for your presence here tonight. <laughs> Friends, let me take a moment to pay tribute to my predecessor, James Libson, whose, pre whose tireless work for this organization has made such a difference. James, you are a true mensch, and I'm delighted that your association with us will continue in the years ahead. And I also want to pay tribute to our Chief Executive Officer, Paul Antacconi, and his brilliant team at World Jewish Relief. Paul has done something marvellous. He's built a team that has deep expertise and focuses relentlessly every day, day in, day out, on how we can be ever more effective with the money you so generously contribute. Now, as your new chair, I've been asked many times in the past months what it was that drew me to World Jewish Relief. Sure, it's the people, the vision, the cause. But it's also more than that for me. It's a raw instinct. I grew up in Manchester, an active member of a small Jewish community in the north of town. But however small my community was, I knew that we were only one community in a global web of Jewish communities, each tied to the other. So when I first visited the Jewish community in Kharkov in Ukraine last year, I felt that connection. And now if you're wondering, it wasn't the Mancunian-like weather, grey, wet and minus 13 degrees. Now I still remember as a child growing up in Manchester, looking at the empty chair and the unused tallet that sat in our shawl for years. The chair for the Russian refusenik. Now that seems a different age now, but it was my first insight as a boy that there are Jewish communities around the world not as fortunate as us. And that is my call to action. And I'm inspired by the words of Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, who says, Judaism is God's call to human responsibility to bring the world closer to the world that ought to be. The Greeks believed in fate and gave the world masterpieces of tragedy. Judaism is the principled rejection of tragedy in the name of hope. And it's this rejection of tragedy in the name of hope that drives me. It drives World Jewish Relief, and it's inspired this organization's leaders ever since the formation in response to Hitler's rise to power in Germany. And my predecessors showed immense courage bravery and boldness by bringing tens of thousands of children and adults to the UK from Nazi-occupied Europe before, during and after the Holocaust. And today, we aspire to hold true to that history, to bring hope, dignity, compassion and friendship where there has been suffering and loss. And that really is what underpins our work today and our focus on older Jewish people, on Jewish livelihoods, and as the Chief Rabbi referred to, on humanitarian support around the world. And I personally am inspired by the story of Alexandra, or Sasha Garbazova. She's the only Auschwitz survivor still alive in Moldova today. And Sasha remembers how a number was tattooed on her arm with a needle fixed on a stick. Women had five-digit numbers, men six-digit ones. She remembers how painful it was. She also remembers seeing her mother, noticing huge cuts across her body. She asked her mother what had happened. It was the guards' entertainment, she was told, setting dogs on people. 
But ladies and gentlemen, it is thanks to World Jewish Relief, thanks to you, that Sasha can now live out her autumn years in dignity. Thanks to you, we bring hope. We give her food every day, we've repaired her home, and we've brought her back into the Jewish community. So we reject tragedy, we bring hope. And over the past year alone, thanks to your generous support, we've helped over 15,000 older Jewish people, 15,000 Sashas. When I, when I was in the Ukraine last year, they were preparing for Rosh Hashanah, making sure that everyone, however isolated they may be, could see sweetness in their new year. We bring Jewish communities together. And of course, as you've heard, tonight is not just about the older people we help, but our impacts across all Jewish generations, breaking the cycle of poverty for good. We cannot allow Sasha's children to find themselves in the same situation as Sasha when they get older. And we know, we know that work is the best route out of poverty. And we know that dignity lies in the ability to support yourself and to support your family. And that is why, in the past year, we've helped almost 2,000 people find work or set up shop. Our livelihood development programs reconnects the long-term unemployed with the labor market, focusing on basic skills, on training, on employability. And ladies and gentlemen, supporting lives does not end there. Although all money raised tonight will go towards our work with Jewish older people and supporting people back into work, World Jewish Relief's work, as you've heard, extends beyond our communities to helping victims of humanitarian and natural disaster anywhere in the world. And I want to take a moment to pay tribute to the efforts of our team and the generosity of our supporters to you and people in this room who've responded to our emergency appeals, most recently Haiti and before that the refugee crisis. Funded entirely out of ring-fenced appeals, these emergency operations not only make a real difference in the, to those in crisis, they also carry the message that we, the UK Jewish community, take our Jewish obligations seriously. We act to help those most in need, and we act with compassion rooted in our Jewish values. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud of our recent work with refugees here in the UK. We remember our own past and we recognize our own international responsibilities as Jews to bring hope where there is only tragedy. Now beyond our borders, today's turbulent world brings huge challenges. In Ukraine, Belarus and Moldova, with a combined Jewish community larger than the United Kingdom's, rising prices, shrinking pensions and war and conflicts bring immense difficulty to those on the margins. Now, when you stand back and look at the scale of the challenge, it would be easy to conclude that it is just too difficult. But let me tell you, that would be plain wrong. Our response, redouble our efforts, do more, do better, with drive, with urgency. Our goals are ambitious, but they're within reach. Helping 50,000 older Jewish people by 2020 people, ladies and gentlemen, who live on the brink of survival, supporting fragile Jewish communities living on a knife edge, we are their only lifeline. Repairing every single Jewish home that still needs work in the former Soviet Union, helping 100,000 people out of poverty by 2020, not through handouts, but through hand-ups, breaking the cycle of poverty, and together, we can create a world free of Jewish poverty within our lifetimes. So we reject tragedy, we bring hope, and that is only possible with your support. Ladies and gentlemen, we need your help. Thank you.